Welcome to Evening Prayers for Monday the 29th of November. This evening we continue our prayers around the beginning of Advent and tonight our reading comes from the second letter of Peter and in it Peter is talking directly about the different views people have when it comes to thinking about the second coming of Jesus. In response to that and following on from our prayers yesterday our theme for this evening is therefore again responding to the truth. Let us pray. We pray together at the beginning of Advent to wait for the coming Messiah. We look up to the darkness of heaven and we see the first faint glimmer of the sunrise creeping over the horizon. The day is not yet upon us, but its dawning is announced. Advent God, you prepared your people for your coming. You gave your word to us through prophets and priests, through stories told and retold, through the history of time, through the written word, through the spoken word. But always your word. As Christmas lights begin to dazzle us, we know that your glory is way beyond their transfixing power. So Advent God, we adore you and we bring ourselves before you just as we are. There are Advent prayers which were first written in Latin, spoken by Christian communities back in the 8th century. They come from a series of biblical texts that give us ways and names to think about the coming of Jesus. O oh, wisdom, come to us wisdom from on high, help us to order our lives with thoughtfulness. O oh Lord, Adonai, come to us, Lord, and leader of your people, save us from our sins. O oh, Root of Jesse, come to us, Root of Jesse, and be a sign, come quickly to save us. O oh, Key of David, come, Key of David, release us from all that imprisons us. O morning star, come morning star, shine your righteousness upon us and lighten our darkness. O king of the nations, come king of the nations, Christ our cornerstone, come to save your people. O come, O come Emmanuel, our king, our teacher, our hope and our saviour, come and save us. Amen. Our reading tonight comes from the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 3 to 4 and 8 to 14. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised, Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, 
make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Let us pray. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not look for your coming and do not notice the ways in which you reach out to us. Forgive us and give us eyes to see that you come to us through the desert and through the fields of corn, through the crowds and through the empty places, through temple courts and refugee camps, through the busyness of our lives and the emptiness of our hearts. When we are weak and when we are strong, you come to us at Advent and at Christmas. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not see that you have come to us. And our next prayer is the song Praise to the God Who Clears the Way. <laughs> those who live in war zones and those who are refugees, for those who work in the emergency services and for our armed services. We pray for light in dark places. We pray for those who are vulnerable today, for those who will go hungry today, for those who are imprisoned for their faith, for the very young and the very old. We pray for light in dark places. We pray for those who are in need today, for those who are ill and those in pain, for the bereaved and those who are mourning, and those who dread the coming of mourning. We pray for light in dark places. We pray for our community today, for the misunderstandings that separate us from one another for the tiredness we feel, for the hope we have lost. We pray for light in dark places. And we pray for ourselves and for those we love, for the things that trouble us, for the things we long for, for our hidden fears. We pray for light in dark places. We thank you, God, for the light of the Christ child in the dark places of the world. 
the dark places of our community, our church and our lives. Help us to shine your light and to bring your peace, your love and your hope this Christmas tide. Amen. And so we're sending out prayer. May the light of all light infuse the dark places of our hearts. May the truth of all truth comfort the confused places of our minds. May the peace of all peace calm the restless places of our souls and may the blessing of God sustain and guide us through Advent and always. Amen. <laughs>